Well, hey there, idiots. Welcome back to Observe. In today's video, I'm going to be analyzing the nonverbal communication of a few people here, all kind of working in tandem in what is arguably one of the messiest debates since the presidential debates with Joe Biden and President Trump. This was a mess all the way around. More on that in a second. Let's go ahead and roll the intro. Alright, so here recently I'm speaking about a day or so ago from this moment here that I'm recording this video, Ethan over at the H3 podcast set up what was supposed to be a debate between himself and a person named Steven Crowder. I'll tell you a little bit about Steven Crowder here. So Stephen Blake Crowder is an American Canadian conservative political commentator, media host, and comedian. He hosts Louder with Crowder, a daily political podcast and YouTube channel. He is particularly notable for a recurring segment on his channel called Change My Mind. He is also a former contributor at Fox News. Long story short, he is a heavily right-leaning podcast creator, content creator, that does a lot of political stuff. Now, Ethan Klein is well known for the YouTube channel H3H3 H3 Productions, in which he and his wife co-host. The majority of their content on their main channel comprises of reaction videos and sketch comedy, in which they satirize the internet culture. So, Let's go ahead and take into consideration the two backgrounds here. We've got a channel that's supposed to specialize on politics and a channel that's supposed to specialize on internet drama. And already we see that this is not a good system for a debate, just all the way around. With that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and introduce person number three, surprise person number three into this, whose name is Sam Cedar. He is an American actor, progressive political commentator, and media host. Just so all of you know, I got all of this information from... Wikipedia. So you're welcome to do your own research on that as well. But this just puts into perspective who we're dealing with in this little catastrophe that we're about to watch. So we have political person right wing, we have political person left wing, and we have Ethan who is left leaning, but he's not a political channel. He sometimes deals with it as far as I understand. And also according to the internet. So now we're going to see this this debate unfold. So what the plan was is that Stephen was going to reach out to Ethan or vice versa. There's all sorts of drama. Go watch the podcast. I've linked it in the description below. Go watch the full thing. You'll understand. But they were supposed to debate. Now, Ethan realizes that he's not a debater and he's not strong enough on his political understanding to be successful in a debate. So he decided to have Sam come in, who is good at those things. Now, Stephen had refused to do an interview with Sam or a debate with Sam before multiple times. It's a whole mess. So Ethan used this as a weird, weaselly way. It was kind of a dishonest way of getting this debate to happen. And Stephen didn't like it too well. I think that's plenty of background story, though. I've been talking for far too long already on this, so let's go ahead and begin into the actual analysis and see what their nonverbal communication tells us during all of this. Let's go. I'm really glad to have uh, my next guest on the show, and I've always said this. I always respect people who um, enter, the, enter into the arena. Um, and, you know, we've had a lot of debates on this show, which is different. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about Steven during this part because, Ethan, we only had a very short clip up there. So Steven during this part, he says, I'm very happy to welcome in his show hosty sort of tone, and then his tone drops in both volume and in pitch, which can be an indicator of an emotional state and emotional change. Now, if that is, then that would be an indicator of distaste emotionally for Ethan, that drop-off is related to negative emotions in sadness or depression or any of these more somber emotions. It could also mean insincerity sometimes or, in very odd cases, intense rage. In this area, it does make more sense to be negative in the area of distaste towards Ethan. So that could be that indicator there. He also has a little tiny flash 
of contempt on his face right after he says, welcome to the arena. And this is helping us understand the tone from Steven from the very, very get go. I'm also going to let you know, this channel is not a political channel. I don't discuss politics here. I won't cover political things often on the channel unless it's highly, highly demanded or if there's something that I can really help clear up. This is one of those ones that was highly, highly demanded. So if you're here, I don't care what you do with your politics. I don't care where you share your opinions, so on and so forth. Just try to be respectful to the people around you that might not have the same views. That's my little disclaimer for that. Let's continue in on this analysis here. From like a change my mind where we sit down on conversations. But uh, my old Brazilian jiu-jitsu coach always said, if you come a switch, we go switch. You go spicy, we're gonna do a little spicy. So we're always trying to keep it as respectful as possible. And I really do appreciate the guy making the time because a lot of people haven't, has a huge YouTube channel, several YouTube channels, one of the OGs, mm -hmm. a lot of people. Okay, so he has another slip of contempt coming in a couple times while he's speaking on this area here. Whether or not that's related to his emotional state, it's difficult to say. It has popped up on his face. Also, verbally speaking, he's now speaking about the size of Ethan's channel, which is really oddly, stupidly important to him. It doesn't make sense in the context of the debate, but it's really important to Steven. So you'll hear this idea of bigger channels coming up a lot, and he really hangs a lot of weight on that. So we'll see that in a second. But as far as his emotional state so far, not too much to be able to say. People watch him. Uh, you know him. Some of you like him. Some of you don't. Same can be said for me. Ethan Klein from H3H3. Uh, Ethan, thank, thanks, man, for making the time. You're very welcome. And I just want to say, I know you called me. You said that I would be a layup. <laughs> I, which is I think fine. I which something is fine. Like and yeah, I think yeah. you're right, because I don't think I'm a very good debater. I think you know that. So uh, I didn't want to make it too easy for you. Oh, OK. So uh, I've prepared. OK. I don't know if Ethan has this. This is I've, I've seen Ethan eat in almost every single one of his podcasts. Is that a thing for those of you who watch the H3 podcast? Does he eat regularly in his podcast? I'm just noticing that there's nothing really to note so far. Even with the little clip where it flashed back over to Steven, not too much emoting is happening there. It's about to happen. Let's watch. Yes. All right. So, so what we were going to talk ready. about is uh, what we were going to talk about is, you know, the initial quote that happened. So you can see that Steven is doing some manipulators down here on his hands while they're folded. This is self-soothing. This is very common for anybody even who's just in front of a camera, regardless of how long you've done it, there's still some nerves that are involved. So it's not uncommon to see that. Also, it's the beginning of a debate, a possible debate. So there might be a little bit of nerves involved. Now that doesn't go well with the contempt that we saw earlier, which indicates a moral or intellectual superiority or a belief that a person has that. So those two kind of clash a little bit. We'll have to see what really plays out more strongly here. I think he's looking off there. Uh, the initial quote that kind of was turned into um, a little bit uh, of a meme, which wasn't intentional, and uh, was you saying you don't even have to think about it regarding the CDC. Hmm. Uh, and I disagree with that. Um, I think people should think about it. I believe, and we said, talked about this through playful ribbing, in an aggregation of medical authorities and scientific voices to make an informed and rational decision. Um, so where do you think that I was that I'm wrong on that? Steven, do you know that um, the Spartans are? OK, so Ethan's not going to answer the question, which is a terrible move in a debate. But Stephen's trying to get the debate rolling because that's the point of this episode. Ethan's about to not answer that. As far as the nonverbal communication during this time, not too much to be said. There's not enough emotion behind the words to be able to lend towards us getting an interesting read. So that's just so far. I promise things are about to change dramatically in that area in just a second. Did they are like uh, practice man love with children? Oh, geez. Okay, so this is what's going to happen. I to what did I tell you? He was going to do anything he could to avoid. Oh! Oh, there he is. Oh, no, Sam. C OK, so Ethan was stalling. For those of you who couldn't tell, he was stalling with that line that had nothing to do with anything. And now we're seeing a little bit of genuine emotion coming out on Steven's face. And you can hear that not only reflected in his pitch, which is quite obvious. It's very loud. It's increased in pitch and volume and tone. All three have increased. This is common in a various number of instances, but the top ones are in happiness or joy in that area of emotions or in surprise it's also constant in that area of emotion so in this case i don't think that steven is overjoyed i do believe he is quite surprised that also makes sense with the, the expression on his face which is quite clear let's see how this plays out 
Peter, what a well, no. what a fucking nightmare. You, I had no idea this was going to happen. I thought I thought Ethan was a stand-up guy. This is oh, where we are. Well, yeah, I told Dave, Dave, remember I told you? I told you. I said this is Okay. So Ethan tricked Steven, right? And now we're seeing a fake smile from Steven, not reaching his eyes fully, not synchronized across his face. So this is a fake smile, it's a forced smile, and he's also throwing insults at Ethan all the way already, just straight off the bat. Both of them have already thrown insults at each other. It's just not not going really well. And now Sam, who Steven has ghosted multiple times, even canceling a debate, I believe it was the day of or the day before, right shortly before a debate with Sam, all of these things. Sam just wants to debate now. Steven refuses. Understandably, it's not not in his schedule to debate Sam. Let's see what happens. I guarantee you he's going to do anything he can to avoid the debate. Well, I just think he believes that he should debate you. <laughs> no, no, he doesn't. He just takes advantage of, of women with, you know, mental health Steven, issues. Ethan Klein know, doesn't. I, okay, so now we can hear Steven starting to throw more insults at Ethan, and they're fairly controversial and inappropriate insults that he's throwing. So this is a characteristic of Stevens. He does seem to immediately begin throwing insults and hurling them rather rapidly at anybody who decides that they need to surprise him with anything or anything along those lines. Not good news for him. They also have cut from Steven over to, I believe this is another person in the studio, from what I can understand, maybe his assistant or something along those lines. I'm not exactly certain, but it's cut away from Steven, which is a curious choice. I don't get to see what Steven's reaction is here. From what I can see from Sam, we have a little bit of narrowing of the eyes. The eyebrows are a little bit lowered, but that does seem to be where his eyebrows rest normally. And he has a small smile. He seems to be collected at this moment. Let's go ahead and continue watching. Stand up and do to his own fighting. Say, right. I just oh, Let's producers bring on FM. You would uh, do anything to avoid talking to me. I think you're, the point that you made- Yes, Joe Rogan. Yeah, Joe Rogan and, Rogan and, and, Dave, Rubin and, and Dave Rubin, Rubin and Jordan Peterson and Noam Chomsky and Sam Harris. So I have difficulty with people who think that in order to be able to win a debate or an argument, they have to start being loud and obnoxious. I'm struggling to remain unbiased in regards to Steven because his character, personality, everything about him rubs me the wrong way. I definitely believe that there's a more intellectual, and a quieter way to handle things, but sure, yelling insults is effective, I guess. So this is what I'm seeing so far on this front. There's not enough to really emotionally encapsulate what's going on on the screen at this point because it's not really about them, but you can see from this assistant over here, I'm not sure what his name is, but he has his hands braced on a leg and the arm of the chair. He also looks uncomfortable. He's tucking his chin in a little bit and the smile doesn't reach his eyes either. So he just, he's not happy. He's very uncomfortable to have the screen suddenly be pointed at him. And this is, it's, it's a mess. Let's keep going. Everyone's been avoiding and not just attempting Sam's to get Peter. your audience by jumping in. <laughs> well, I, I debated with uh, Charlie Kirk. <laughs> Stephen, I mean, it's okay. about issues. Let's about talk issues. about those yeah. issues. That's I think what you're you doing some here. Valid yeah. points. You're that so I think clever. I right Can you understand what they're saying? Is it difficult to take turns? talking like is it is it diff is that is that hard for people to think to themselves like hold on hold on they're talking let them talk and then i'll talk does does it have to be a yelling competition i don't know i don't know let's keep watching no idea that you were taking your show off early last time coming in today with your pig pen peanuts i wish every <laughs> You take those off with a velveteen really button. We yeah. must have been Black very worried eyes, about this, Stephen. Like I don't know why. <laughs> no it one's would be worried oh, come about on, it. Sam. So I didn't want to well, do let's, it. Let's have Sam, a debate. Come on, no just, I'll tell you what. I have a general. This. I have a general. This is a great opportunity. I don't start a debate based with people on a lie. And how about you get sabotaging? To a, how about you get Stephen? Show yourself, you coward. Stephen, show yourself. Don't show your co-host. Ethan, you should show yourself. Ethan, Ethan, how can you respect yourself as a man, brother? Something so strongly that you're such a Howard, yeah, stop debate. showing your little leprechaun co-host who comes right out back. dressed hey, like Ethan, your Ethan, sidekick. Come on, Ethan, why do you have to bring I on show a show? Show Steven! The I'm really of the why are you? That's the thing I've ever heard. So you Just have a show guy with Steven. less... Part of me thinks that you guys just really like to see me die slowly inside. This is such a mess. Nobody is handling this well. Nobody. 
Everybody's just sitting there yelling at each other, saying insults. I can't really hear Sam at this point, but it doesn't sound as if he's throwing as many insults. It sounds like Sam's just wanting to get the debate rolling, but Ethan's throwing insults, and Steven's throwing insults, and the co-host or assistant, whoever that is, is also laughing and throwing insults in there as well. This, this, is, this isn't showing anybody's intelligence right now. Nobody's showing that they have the smallest iota of intelligence. Like, just, just chill. Chill and talk. Don't yell. Just don't yell. There's not a need. I'm sorry. There's just not a need. And, and sure, be loud. I don't care. But don't be loud and needlessly mean to people. Viewers to come on to debate him because you can't. <laughs> Well, obviously, what? so the assistant is still very uncomfortable. You can tell by the bracing of the hand. And then also you could see this hand in a fist that is a subconscious seepage of aggression from that. So that this side from Steven's side is very aggressive. Ethan's side you know, within Ethan, he's very aggressive. And Sam doesn't seem to be very aggressive, but he also doesn't seem to be taking on the let's take turns speaking side of things either. Oh, my God. Why? Why? Obviously, I'm a, if I'm a layup yeah, and not a debater. Well, look, yeah, you're the I one mean, who you're called. The you're the one who got first. Steven is the one this. that got angry about Show it. Show Steven. Look, Don't be hold such a, a coward. Right, hold on. So let me let me right, let me hear so what let me hear what Pete Penn has to say here really quick. Fair enough. Show um, but Steven. Ethan, Ethan, look, I I don't hold on a second, Ethan. This is because initially I came on here to talk with Ethan. Ethan. Come on, man. Look, the same reason. So the repeating of a person's name like that while speaking to them is a domination tactic. Anytime that you repeat a person's name again and again and again and again, it's to be able to uh, achieve authority over them, be it verbally, non-verbally, so on and so forth. So where he's doing this, Ethan, 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 he's doing a calm down gesture here as well. And then he goes back to having his hands folded in front of him. But that is something to take note of. That is part of Steven's character as well as fairly dominating in any sort of situation. <laughs> And then speaking on Sam's face right now, the, the main expression that is on Sam's face during this time with the eyebrows being pulled together and lightly upwards would be qualified as concerned or pleading, perhaps a mixture thereof. It's also related to sadness, perhaps fear as well. You can sometimes see those come out. It's in that vein of emotional states there. So we could see that on his face and he maintains that pretty regularly throughout the debate and the rest of his face is relatively non-emotive. Let's keep watching. And then I haven't ever had a conversation with Sam Cedars, the same reason that uh, Joe Rogan, uh, Sam Harris, Brett Weinstein, Dave Rubin, Ben Shapiro don't own anything. It's based on a lie, Ethan. Just what? like... I don't quite understand why Steven's throwing out other podcasts or other people into this mix. From what I can understand, he's saying that they won't talk to Sam, so he doesn't have to talk to Sam. From what I understand, it's hard to hear, really, because still everybody's talking over each other, but uh, whatever, I guess. It's the you lie. claiming my, Ethan, what's the you lie? claiming you know, my booker lie, reached Steven? out to you, Ethan, when you Steven, know that's not the true. There's no what's one ducking you, Why Sam. You I've so never afraid. Sam, Yo, Sam, listen, Sam, I Sam, think Sam, you're Sam. A smart I guy. can call out my. I... <laughs> so Sam's asking, what's the lie? Steven's not responding because Steven is insistent he would, will not debate on any level, Sam. Why is a really good question. Why will he not debate? Well, the reason he gives is because of it's a lie, and he's kind of vague with that. And so Sam is asking Steven, what's the lie? <laughs> During this time, Sam, his eyebrows are drawn together and lowered. This is an aggression expression. He is aggressively asking, what's the lie? Then he says, I believe that you're a smart guy. And his eyebrows turn upward again, as they have classically throughout the rest of it. But his head is shaking no, which indicates to me that he doesn't really believe that Steven's a smart guy, as shown by his nonverbal communication. Let's see what Steven's doing during this time, too. I don't Tyson, understand why it doesn't mean you that I'm ducking are him. so worried about this. Why do you feel that? Why don't. do you feel that anyone, Sam? Why do you feel that anyone owes you airtime when you have a fortieth of the audience and you've been doing I a show? I don't think anybody. For, oh, here it comes up again. Stephen is thinking to himself. I don't know what his thought process is, but it it has to be something along the lines of, I have a lot of subscribers, so anybody that has less subscribers than me is instantly way less knowledgeable, credible, or worthy of my time. That seems to be the logical progression that Steven is holding, which if that's the case, then uh, he obviously won't care what I have to say about it. So 
who cares? But that does seem to be pretty important to him is this number of subscribers, which the number of subscribers doesn't mean that the person knows more. So this weird thing that Stephen brings up really shows where his intellect is at, is that this isn't about actual intellectual debating. This is all just about money, fame, and attention for him. Let's keep watching. Ten times the time, I think, I think that Ethan has just given it to me. I didn't right. ask him for it. And right. so no, you've been begging the for real it for a long time with everyone Stephen, bigger than yourself. Are you so yeah, he found he about can't build an audience. With me. And so what why happens is he uploads so 15. Worried? We're still back on the audience. Still back on the audience on this. But hey, maybe, you know what? Maybe you want to see me just slowly pass into the void and become a, a husk of myself as I watch this. <laughs> Perhaps that's it. So let's go ahead and continue watching this and, and I'll add what I can around their yelling. Times more do you think has your less than a 50th says, of the audience. Well, that's why he wants to debate you is so he can build his Sam, audience. Do you Sam, think come on, your where's... audience cares yeah, yeah. that I only have a million subscribers and you have what, six or seven million I subscribers? Think, let me answer. Can I, I answer your question? Can do. I answer your question? Can I answer your question? Sure. Do you want me to answer your question? My audience would say Sam who? Just like Joe Rogan's audience. And... <sighs> so this is it. This is Stephen's goal. He wants clout. Yeah. Yeah, let's keep watching. I'll see if I can add something non-verbally to this. See if there's anything that's not just blaringly obvious to unpack. Well, ben Shapiro's and Dave Rubin. And now they all know who I am. Now they all know who you are because you had to show on yourself and do another coward show. College, college students, show. every day that you do that, uh, change we, my hold mind. Hold on a second, hold on a second. Know who those college this is another students lie. Are. This is another lie. Let me, let me be. clarify, Sam. Let me clarify, Sam. The change my mind, everyone knows. I'm this this move the hold on let me talk let me talk no me me time it's me it's me very dominating and usually ignorant personalities do that it's the show right yes. we've had how professors did you know on the... i ended this my show okay, early last talk. week Stephen. if your audience because doesn't you're even an know idiot me, how and did half you know of your that? staff doesn't do you like my you show? because i'm a diehard fan yes it's because I... Steven is taken off guard, so he's throwing insults, he's yelling, he's talking over, he's trying to command and demand the conversation to go his way. And it's hard for me to even track who's interrupting who on this. Because while Sam is more level-headed with what he's saying, he's still interrupting times that Steven is talking as well. And Steven's just a mess. He's completely unsettled by this. Who cares about the sub numbers? Who cares, man? Who cares? He's a diehard well, fan. If you're yeah, a I've die heard of you, fan, but I just why, met you. Why not? Congratulations, have me. Sam Cedar. <laughs> Sam has shifted away from the pleading, fear sort of expression that he was holding before with his eyebrows, and now they are more towards the lowered side of things. He's aggressive, but synchronized. His aggression isn't a show, it's very, very genuine. And Stephen have a, a conversation. Huge fan. I, I will talk about every time I try and talk, you're interrupting, about, Sam. Steve. Yeah, right now, I'm trying to talk with you. You're interrupting, Sam. You bombarded Sam. the show. Okay, you, bombarded, you bombarded my show under a false pretense. You claimed bombarded. that ever, just like you claimed that I ducked the debate with you under a false pretense. Have I uh, ever? That is what the Politicon people told me. Oh, is that what the they told you? Well, so you're just lazy yeah. with your research? End of no, big I, tech. What, is you continue with the I lie. They you need to research to say, did Steven ever accept? They said you were booked. Let me explain to you. Let me explain. Who's interrupting who now, Steven? <laughs> Notice Ethan's gone. Ethan just kind of pieced on out of this, but he had made it very clear before this that he wasn't there really to debate. He knows that he is not a good debater and he's not politically savvy enough to debate. I do understand. I have to actually, you know what? I'll talk about my opinion at the very, very end. They they you. Let me explain. To, hey, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Sam, and you literally Sam, 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 sweetheart. Spirit. Sam, fake stand up comic who we can't find any footage about online. Let I'm me not finish. A stand up comic. Oh, you're not. Okay, that makes sense because everything that I've seen is incredibly un. This has nothing to do with the conversation either. This is Stephen desperately clambering at maintaining authority and superiority in this conversation, in which he's losing because he was caught off guard. It's it's a fool's way to maintain authority by flinging insults at the other person just to just to get that superiority on there. That's it. That's all that Steven has right now. That is, by the way, if, if you're not in debating, that's the point that you've won. 
as soon as the one person is flinging insults, you've won. Because that's what they've resorted to. They have nothing else, so they're going to pick on you. Let's keep watching. Funny and unentertaining, well, which may I'm explain the audience. Ironic. Comedy. Irony alert, Stephen. Comedian. How much have you Comedian. watched of my stuff, the Stephen, that you think that your audience can I answer your question? appreciate our, Sam. Our, our discussing Sam. things? Sam, Samuel, can I answer your question? Yes. Hear the name repetition thing again? It's all he has. That's all he has. But let's keep watching. So you have gone on, you've done the same thing with other, other comments. Everyone has a bigger audience than you. Because you said, I want to speak with Steven Crowder. You believe that at some point there was some acceptance? When have I ever done a, a, a Politicon? Ever. I when don't I, know. As a matter of fact, in the last decade, like in the last decade, Stephen, in the I... last decade, I haven't done a single political conference. How I hosted CPAC say... for four years and stopped because they suck. How they don't say, pay okay. and they're full of losers. What about... Wow, Stephen throwing more insults because he can't think of anything better to do. This is not being a nonverbal analysis at all. This is just, this is just a mess. <laughs> all right. Gavin and you've been McKinnon's clamoring show. for it, and Gavin it's a lie. told me that you dropped out of doing how his show because that you, this is just here saying to go. gossip. How can I have I've never met more of a woman. Career when he wants well, to keep I debating. To, I, don't I don't know. Let's talk about the issue. So, the Ethan, do you, Ethan, do you Ethan, do you want to have a conversation, Ethan, about the vaccine? Because Ethan, do you want to have a conversation? You're going to hide. Absolutely, I do. So why are you hiding behind San Cedar? Oh no, no, no. Me and Sam are aligned. I'm not hiding. He just well, you're just a liar. Because remember, we said. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I mean, it yeah. sort of yeah, feels yeah. like it's you ridiculous. guys are the ones who are hiding. Really? Hiding? really? No, no, no. This is actually... Who snuck in on you? <laughs> Who's the guy who never appears on stage, never does a live show, but it's never a even sheds, never even allows a shadow of comedy to be perceived on his program? It's just <laughs> hiding. Right. Everything we do is out in the open. H3. So I'm going to talk about the nonverbal communication of Stephen during this point. The part where you're seeing that the, the actual desynchronization that gives everything away is pay attention to the tension in his body as opposed to the expression on his face. The entire time his body is extremely tense. His shoulders are tense. His arms are tense. He is extremely tense. This is an indicator of where his subconscious is at. He's very unsettled. He's very, very off put by this instance. He has been taken by surprise. He is backpedaling, and that's the indicator. It's the tenseness, the setting of his body. Meanwhile, on his face, he has a forced fake expression of joy or happiness the entire time. That's what's showing up non-verbally for him. For Sam's side, it's still being very difficult to get anything other than the movements of the eyebrows and then the very overt, obvious ones that synchronize with what little words we can hear him say. Ethan is technically seeming to hide behind Sam on this. It does feel like that. It does seem as though Ethan was, yep, yeah, yeah, let's go ahead and debate. And actually, just kidding, you're debating somebody else because I don't know how. That does seem to be exactly what's happening. And so when Stephen's calling him out for that, that seems to be fairly true. But when it does pan over to Ethan, you could see that he's not really gun-ho about this, leaning back in his chair, smiling a little bit, trying to show that he's nonchalant. Oh my goodness, people. I can't, I can't, I can't believe, I can't believe you've done this to me. I can't believe it. H3, Steven, you know you're wearing a holster. we agreed. So what? Hold on a second, yeah? So? I want to normalize uh, responsible gun ownership. Is that your debate? No wonder you had to bring in a hack for you. you. Well, no, you're cock talking cock about right comedy. Well, that's I mean, a debate strategy. That's right. not very funny. You, you have a holster, bro. Also, you have a holster. He takes advantage you, 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 of you, 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 mentally you, you, ill women you, you, for a show. With just about Do you want me to add more to this? Is there something more that you need me to add? I don't think they're really hiding anything. So my nonverbal analysis is just going to be like stating the very obvious. Let's keep going. Game game all right. Okay. All of it. All right, Sam. You 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 got it. You got it. I hope you have no, a. Uh, come on. I hope hey, you have a wonderful highlight reel. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> Let me just make one it. point. Hope you enjoy Politicon. Hold on. Let me make one point, Stephen. Take it easy. Stephen, don't fail. I appreciate it. Don't fail, you coward. Hey, Sam. One thing before I go. One thing before I go. Can you take off your glasses, Stephen? Hold on. One thing before I go. Can you take off your glasses? We just want to see. I just want to see if you take them off. If you have if you have the velveteen rabbit buttons. That's the oh, only thing I'm curious about. It's the I, only interesting part Steven, about it. Or if I, there's a soul. Let's just take debate. Off the, take off the glasses. This is unacceptable. 
Steven Crowder, you're a f For those of you who don't know what they're doing right now, Steven Crowder, dumbass over there, wants Sam to take off his glasses so that he can be racist. Because there's certain very ignorant, stupid, low-life excuses for human beings think that it's funny to make fun of other races and nationalities because of attributes about them or features. So there's a, a very racist, false, ignorant, dumb, pathetic, I don't know, insert other stupid words here, racist conception of people who are Jewish having small, beady eyes. So that's what he's doing here. That's what Steven is doing. And now, you know what? I'm gonna finish this and then I'm gonna talk for just a tiny second. Let's debate, uh, Steven. Don't hide behind the glass. Don't be a coward. Don't say Let's will. debate, Ethan. You've I lost coward. Coward. Debate. Right. Debate the coward. Debate the issues. What does it matter who you debate, coward? <laughs> All right, good. You guys <laughs> wow. are good. Thank you. Coward. You yeah, won't even take off the glasses. Uh, I was right. All right, yeah, you can run away. You run away twice. Cold feet again. Okay, now now I'm going to talk for just a tiny, tiny second. I was worried that I was going to offend some people, and I likely am. I'm likely going to offend somebody here by going off on Steven like this. Steven, you're a joke. Oh my god, you're a joke. To go and attack somebody's race because you're losing at a debate. Oh my god, you're an idiot. And a racist. I don't care if you're Republican. I don't care if you're Democrat. I don't care if you're somewhere else or in between. I don't care. But... If you, if you are causing pain to other races, nationalities, genders, identities, or anything due to your political preference, you're an idiot. That is not okay. If you're still so stupid that you think that making fun of a race is okay, you should never have a following. Ever. Nobody should ever follow you. You're qualifiably a dumbass. That's my, you know what, that's my opinion. Non-verbally speaking, what we were able to see throughout that was Steven showing some aggression behaviors, Sam showing some aggression behaviors, Ethan showing some smug behaviors, I think would be the best way to describe it. We saw contempt and anger, surprise, tension, and forced laughter and joy, all of that come from Steven's side of things. And then from Sam's side of things, still interrupting, still being rude with interrupting another person, but at least maintaining nonverbal composure a little bit. We see the aggression slipping into his upper half of his face a fair bit. Sometimes it would cross the entirety of his face. There were areas where he was showing surprise in relation to things that Steven was saying. Over on Ethan's side, maintained from the very tiny amount that we were able to see of Ethan, a fairly smug or aloof uh, demeanor about him with the leaning back and the small smile and not really getting involved in this sorry excuse for a debate. If you're watching this, for those of you who are left and haven't clicked away or gotten angry with me, if you have people in your life that when you're trying to explain your side of a story, or if you're having an argument and they refuse to let you speak, but they use things like using your name over and over and over again, which is a power manipulation authority move, and they try to use overt and dominating body language to maintain control of that argument. If they continually interrupt you, if they sling needless insults at you, get out of that relationship. It's not, it's not healthy for you. And they're not going to see your way. I don't know how this video is going to do, to be honest. I don't know. But I hope you enjoyed it. But that's all that I've got for the day. My name is Logan, and you have been oh so awesome as you always are. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.